but I would not in, in any way look at the uh, your uh, comment section here on YouTube, pick one out and hold you responsible for a comment section. It's interesting that you said that because you know, that caused so much of a controversy for Emma when she did that to Tim Pool. I mean, she picked out that one guy, the shooter, and said that that was indicative of Tim Pool's audience. I mean, do you think that that was an unfair characterization for her to make? As you said, we've been having an hour-long conversation about trying to interpret someone's words and interpret these laws and that, you know, whether it can be interpreted in multiple ways and whether it's really that bad. And to me, when you label these things like um, es establishing the neo-confederacy or lost causism, or in another video, you talked about how these are the incremental steps to fascism. When you use this like very strong language for, the, for these sorts of things, I mean, you're basically, in my mind, you're setting up people to, to view this like they need to use violent solutions to solve these kinds I've of problems. I've never, ever, ever suggested uh, that people no i know that you haven't violent. directly suggested that but i'm saying that by using this language you're basically wait so wait a second you're telling me mind. that you're you've just spent an hour on a one video that i did i don't know how many months ago or was it a year ago or whenever it this was. was a couple of weeks ago um and you're this was a couple of weeks ago yes yeah okay so you're telling me you just spent an hour um uh, taking issue with my interpretation of this guy advocating for this law with the uh, idea that you know what happened in the Oklahoma uh, race massacre was a question of bad actions by individuals. And you're telling me that that is misinformation, but you're saying that because I say these are, uh, and I've said this, I think quite often, that uh, I don't know if this is fascism as much as it is steps that are necessary, incremental steps towards fascism, that I'm inciting violence? I said, so, and you even said this, uh, I don't know when you upload your show versus when you do it. You had a clip just like the day before yesterday where you were talking about the anti-CRT laws in Florida being the incremental steps to fascism. And as you said, you repeated, you said this several times. This is a repeated theme of your show. And I'm saying that this is- And, and so me, you're interpreting that vary. as a call to violence? No, I'm not interpreting you as saying this is a call to violence. What I'm saying is that if oh, you paint this, this you picture- No, I'm saying if you paint this picture and your audience is mine, that we're teetering on the edge of fascism, okay? If you were to tell me, Sitch, you know, we're teetering on the edge of white supremacy and fascism, okay? I think it's reasonable that a reasonable person hearing that and believing that would say, I need to use violence to prevent my country from going to fascism. Um, and you're kind of setting people up. I in don't this know scenario. who you're hanging out with, uh, but no, I don't see what, how would violence. Wait, if I told you, in wait, if you believed be... that the country was teetering on fascism, you don't think it would be justified to use violence to prevent that? If the, if the, I don't think it would be effective. I don't think well, one I, individual uh, perpetrated well, I said justified, violence. not effective. I said justified. Well, I wouldn't advocate it. No, and I, I know I'm like, saying, like, do you, you think it would be about? justified for a per if someone thinks, or no. actually, I should say justified? Do you think no. it'd be reasonable? Do you think it'd be reasonable that a reasonable person no. would try to use violence to stop their country from? No, from I don't think it'd be fascism? reasonable because I can't okay. possibly I think of like how an individual's uh, act of violence is going to stop fascism. Yeah, but here's how would that happen? I know that you don't, but other people do. Well, but you're saying reasonable, and I, y you explain to me how that would happen. If it's a reasonable concept, it's easy for you to explain to me. Yeah, because if someone says, okay, my country is literally teetering on fascism. And so I'm trying, I'm trying to, to vote. Reasonable. I'm trying what's to your vote. Reasonable, what's your I'm trying reasonable to action you. that you're going to take? I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain it to you. If someone says my country is teetering on fascism and white supremacy, and I'm going out there and I'm voting, and it's not making a difference, okay? I need to go out with my friends. We need to organize some kind of violent resistance underground movement, or we're going to get guns. We're going to go after people. We're going to start blowing up buildings. We're going to fight against the Who are you going to blow up and go after? They could go after the governor. They could go after the state legislatures. What do you mean? They start burning so down these buildings. You think it's they could start reasonable... kidnapping these people. Wait, wait, I mean, there's literally, me. remember, okay. there's a plot to kidnap the governor like one not that time. long ago. Let me just be clear. You think it's a reasonable action for uh, for people to fight fascism by assassinating a governor of the state of Oklahoma or something? Do you think it would have been reasonable for people to assassinate Hitler before he rose to power? I, I don't know how you would anticipate that he was going to do that. 
you could read Mein Kampf in his prison cell <laughs> when he wrote in his prison cell about how the Jew, like if you're Jewish in Germany and Hitler's rising to power and you've read Mein Kampf, you'd be like, holy shit, I got to get this guy in, out of power. In retrospect, I... I'm talking uh, not even in retrospect, preemptively. Well, I, I, I obviously, I don't think anybody even contemplated doing that before he rose to power. I mean, I don't, I don't think they know expected what your standard him to, of... to, to rise to power, but I'm saying now, especially okay, now with that that's context... My point. Yeah, but now even it's even worse because now you have the context of Hitler. Now you have the context of fascism, which is why you're kind I mean, of invoking fascism I, in this conversation when we talk I, about these topics. I, uh, no, um, I, I the I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, if you think it's reasonable for someone to go out and that it's a reasonable concept for people. To I think organize, a reasonable person could come to that conclusion that it's reasonable to fight I fascism. Disagree. Violence. I disagree. So you think all the Antifa people are crazy and unreasonable? I don't think the Antifa people are going out and trying to assassinate anybody. No, but they believe that they are justified in using violence to stop fascism. They definitely well, I think 100%. they literally go out and try and defend, uh -huh. you know, put themselves between people, for the most part. My understanding of what uh, uh, Antifa does is they get in between uh, fascists and the, the people that fascists are attacking. That's different than going out and assassinating uh, political figures. There's never been anything remotely it's like that. It's, as far as I'm aware of. Well, first of all, I mean, first of all, there was the Gavin Long situation where he literally was listening to Jimmy Dore and other people like that, you know, talk about how we live in this white supremacy society. And it definitely motivated him pretty directly to go out and start assassinating police officers. OK, so that did that did happen. This isn't like something that's never happened before. Number one. And number two, the thing the reason I, I don't I'm surprised to hear you say this is because you want me to defend Jimmy Dore. No, I, I don't. No. Want to Jimmy Dore. But I'm just saying that it's definitely there's a track record for something like this happening. But number two, you literally well, I like don't the other use day, the wait, same rhetoric the, as Jimmy Dore does. I think people are well. Aware. You when you talk about incremental steps of fascism, I mean, you literally had the other day someone call into your show and say, Jimmy or Jimmy, Sam, I listen to your show a lot, and I feel like it's time for the left to start advocating for violence. That happened on your show like two days ago. He's reacting to the news, and I specifically said, don't do that. To you your said. Credit. You said, well, first of all, it's a very weird conversation because you said you would, and I can, let me bring up exactly what you said. And we should be clear, I have open phone lines. So it's not somebody I invited uh, to come. No, I understand that. Okay. You said that you would, the first thing you said was that you would never critique the sense of frustration, desire, or compulsion that there needs to be some type of violent response, which I, that's not exactly what I would say. But then after it, you did say that you, you practically didn't think violence would bring about change in a positive way. But you didn't really talk about like a moral condemnation of it. You didn't call the man crazy or unreasonable or anything of that nature. You just said, well, I don't think it'll work practically. I agree. I don't think it would work practically. I don't think a reasonable person would but assume that it morally, would. you don't have a problem with it? No, I, I, I don't find it like my morality is just not something that I necessarily talk mm. about. I don't have to justify my morality so to you. You're you talking think... about me advocating violence, and I'm not. You just quoted I didn't say you saying, advocated violence. I never, I never and said. And I don't think a reasonable person uh, would. I never said you advocated for violence. What I said is that your rhetoric can lead people down this path, and you have someone who literally called into your that. show who says, it's, I listen to your show rhetoric. a lot, and I feel, it's not, like, it's not I my feel rhetoric. like we're getting there. It's not my rhetoric. It is the, it is the uh, reality of what we're dealing with in this country. So when you talk about, well, wait a minute, you say the reality of what we're dealing with. It's yeah. your perception of reality is that we're going on this path to white supremacy and fascism. Let me preface and you talk by saying about this. this. I should have said this when I came on. And when I talk into about things, show and I'm says, doing it This is how I feel about things. One at a time, guys. You, one, you of you, one of you can talk. Go ahead. Okay. Well, Sam, I, I mean, may, yes. When I'm uh, talking, just as I assume that you are, you are talking about your perception, and I am mm -hmm. talking about my perception. Right. And yes, we disagree. You see what's going on, you don't see a problem. I would see what's going on with the, over the course of the past uh, 20 years, and a rise in, um, in attacks on marginal people. We just had a, uh, uh, you know, a, a guy get uh, knifed uh, to death in Brooklyn the other night because he was gay. Um, I see this resurgence of homophobia. 
I see this uh, resurgence of transphobia. I see this backlash against uh, CRT, uh, a thing that the vast majority of people who uh, you know want to get rid of it can't even define, but they think that it's associated uh, with, in some way, uh, black people being emancipated. I see um, uh, right-wing um, uh, pundits who are making a ton of cash off of attacking trans uh, trans people and gay people, some of the most marginalized people in our society. Uh, and yes, I find it alarming and I find it uh, a, a step towards fascism. I think what DeSantis is doing with his like relentless uh, talk of woke ideology, which is a sort of like this blanket term, which in my estimation, again, my perception, my opinion, if people think this is misinformation, uh, I, I, I think they have a, a blinkered notion of what misinformation uh, is, but that is all coded language that is supposed to basically uh, play on uh, racism, which is endemic in this country. Uh, and it has been endemic in this country for, I, I mean, arguably maybe endemic in this country you know, since its founding. And at different times, it, it can be exacerbated in part because of, uh, you know, uh, of, of the economic situation, in part because of the demographic situation. And yeah, I think that we are uh, taking incremental steps towards fascism. I do not think a reasonable person can hear me say that and think I need to go assassinate a governor. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. That's my opinion. It's my perception. So, well, this is, I mean, I feel like you're kind of making my point is that when you frame, you know, all these things in society is basically leading us down this pathway to the destruction of our society, to living in. Well, I didn't say the fascist, destruction of our society. Well, to live, well, destruction of democracy, I guess, because you're talking about we're going to live under a fascistic rule. I do think it would be reasonable that a reasonable person would want to prevent us from living in a fascistic uh, rule if they believe and interpret it the way that you're kind of laying it out. And the well, thing I think it's reasonable not, for people not, not only, to want the country to be fascist, but that doesn't mean it's reasonable for them to think that assassinating a governor is going to it, inhibit that. It's it's interesting because not only did you have this guy, Colin, and literally... No, I didn't him. have the guy Okay, I'm sorry, in. I'm sorry. A the guy, guy called, called into in. your show, okay? Yes. You had a guy call into your show, and he was and he was saying that he thinks the left should start advocating for violence, and he was saying that he thought revolutions were only successful with violence. And after that guy said that, you read a message you had i don't know how you get you have some sort of like messages come in and you read it out and i don't think you knew what what the guy meant because the message said um hey caller you should read nelson mandela's speech that he gave as a closing statement to his trial do you know what speech he's talking about do i i i Tell I, us. No, I'm not familiar. No. So the speech that the that the message that you read was talking about is the I'm it's called the I'm prepared to die speech. And it's Nelson Mandela talking exactly about how they his movement tried to use nonviolence to fight oppression and to get the political change they want, and it didn't work. So now him and his movement is completely morally justified to use violence to get what they want. I don't think that we have come anywhere close as a society to exhausting civil disobedience. I don't even think we've come No, listen, I'm glad, I'm very like, glad take, that, you, that you say take, that, but in you no have people calling your show who don't I think that obligate, way, obviously. Yes, but I would not in, in any way look at the uh, your uh, comment section here on YouTube, pick mm -hmm. one out and hold you responsible for a comment section uh, specifically based upon the idea that you're, you know, you're saying like, I disagree that the country is going fascist. Therefore, a reasonable person would go out and assassinate an Antifa uh, person or something like that. Um, you know, the I, I don't know what to tell you. You're, right. you know, well, you're I, really well, I, yeah. interested in claiming that, despite the fact that I specifically said to this individual, um, I don't think that violence is the answer, and despite the fact that I have said very right. often on the show, and just the idea. That uh, I mean, it's not just me saying this about that. There are academics who believe that we are uh, on the verge of fascism, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, this is not a wild-eyed, uh, fantastical right. idea. I've been doing this for 20 years, and it's only uh, until recently I think that like there is 
a, um, a burgeoning fascist element to this country. Um, and, and I don't think that a reasonable person would interpret what I've just said on your show, mm -hmm. um, that they should go out and assassinate people. Um, I, 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 right. I, I don't know what to tell you. You well, keep me, repeating me, the same say, point over and over again, right. but let me I'm say not two going to change to, my right. opinion. Let me just say, I guess, two things to kind of to, to conclude this, um, though you can respond, obviously. The first is that, um, you know, if you were in that, in that video that you uploaded, if you were kind of condemning violence as strongly to the caller and to your audience as you were right here, I would feel very different about this. I just felt you, you seemed, and people can watch for themselves, I don't know why you seemed very uncomfortable um, to take a very strong stance against violence, which now you don't. You seem very, you know, adamant about it, which I appreciate. Um, Listen, when somebody but, calls into the show, we get people mm -hmm. to call into the show, okay? And when someone is expressing, like, I, I, I have, when someone calls in like that, it is you. You don't know who this person is. You don't know what their mental state is. You don't know what's going on there. And so I try and be sensitive to, um, you know, who's there and what's going to be the best way, particularly when someone's starting to express something like, the, like those views, the best way to try and sort of unwind them, okay? And um, the, there's not many shows that take unscreened phone calls. And there's not many shows that take unscreened IMs. I don't know if there are any. Yeah, but you're not like you're not a psychologist. You're not just talking to this guy. You're talking. To I know I'm not a psychologist, right? Exactly. And that's what I mean. You're I'm talking not. to an and so, audience, and to so me, the audience, I'm not a, the audience I'm not a psychologist. Is more important. And so I'm just doing in that moment what mm -hmm. I think is the most responsible thing I can do to make sure that that person's bad ideas uh, don't grow and fester. And and so if you think that I didn't respond mm -hmm. with the uh, with the with the proper sort of like emotion or whatever it is, uh, you know, uh, to this call, I, I, it's, I don't know what to tell you. Don't watch the show. Okay. Well, I'm glad, you know, you said, um, you said that you wouldn't pick out a comment from our comment section and, and, you know, paint our show with it, which I appreciate because we do have, you know, crazy people, crazy people kind of, you know, talk to everyone and, and comment on their show. Um, so, I mean, but do you think, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's interesting that you said that because, you know, that caused so much of a controversy for Emma when she did that to Tim Pool. I mean, she picked out that one guy, the shooter, and said that that was indicative of Tim Pool's audience. I mean, do you think that that was an unfair characterization for her to make? I mean, to, to be totally honest with you, I wasn't terribly familiar with that guy who, who, <clears throat> who had... Uh, <clears throat> I wasn't terribly familiar with that guy who had, um, uh, you know, watched uh, like a white His screenshots on, of a Tim Pool on, video. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I wasn't uh, terribly familiar with that, mm -hmm. um, with that whole case. Um, do I think that's indicative of, I think that like if you platform, generically speaking, okay, to be fair, because I don't, I don't know necessarily the details of that Tim Pool thing. But I think that if you platform, and I know that uh, Tim in the past is at least a uh, platform people that I would consider that way. I think he has Jack Posobiec, um, uh, you know, co-hosting his shows or something. Um, but if you platform these people without critiquing them in any way, I do think you uh, uh, deserve um, some uh, responsibility mm -hmm. for the message that they're putting out. They're putting, they're, they're giving, you're giving them credibility, I think. I mean, it's, I think it's okay to have people you disagree with on. And I think it's okay to have like, uh, you know, um, you know, you can put on, I think, you know, horrible people on your show. But I think that you as a host set some type of tone, like you're arguing, right? Uh, that I should have been harsher with this guy who, who called in to, to saying that he, he is, you know, sort of, fantasizing about violence or whatever it was specifically he said. But I do think you have a responsibility in that moment to signal to your audience that these ideas and this person who uh, espouses these ideas are wrong. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think that's, I mean, today, uh, you know, we had Ryan Grimm on, who I, I quite like both personally and I think he's a great uh, journalist. But he, he came on a week ago and there was a couple of things that he um, had cited that 
it, it took a while for me to figure it out with the help of people on Twitter that were misstatements that I think, you know, are, are really unhelpful. And I made a point of correcting that, that today because I do think that there is a responsibility. And so, yes, I think that, I mean, I don't know about the specifics of, uh, of Tim's case, but I do think that, yes, if you have um, uh, fascists or white supremacists on or, uh, you know, bad people in general on, uh, however you define them, uh, then mm -hmm. I think, yeah, you have a responsibility to push back on that so that you are signaling to uh, people, you know, these are bad ideas. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree completely. That's why I, you know, I felt like you weren't pushing back strong enough against the caller. That was my whole point. I mean, yes, I agree. I, you have to push yes. back against these things. I, I mean, I think I, I, I push back uh, against okay. him, but I can see right. that you... Didn't feel well, we're, was a we're approaching an hour and 15 minutes. Um, yeah, totally. If, if you uh, have to go. I do. Uh, okay. I have one, well, I have one well, question before. We well, leave, before you ask you... that question, I want to, I want to thank you for coming on. You definitely lasted significantly longer than Jimmy Dore <laughs> who, uh, ran after the second question. But, um, well, but like I say, I'm not, uh, Jimmy and I have a, uh, a bit of a disagreement on just about everything. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.